Hi guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you part two of my February wrap-up. As always, I have three books to tell you about, and then I'm going to show you what I'm currently reading. So let's just get right into it. The first book I finished since my last wrap-up was The Nazi's Officer's Wife by Edith Hahn Barron with Susan Workin. And this is um, Edith's memoir about her time as a Jew in Austria. She was um, first sent away to a like labor farm where she dug potatoes and asparagus and other things like that for a long time. And then she was moved to a factory where she worked, you know, putting together um, like cardboard boxes for food. And then she found out that her mother had been taken to Poland. And at that time, they didn't know anything about the concentration camps, so they were just assuming that you got resettled in Poland. And so she came back to Vienna to be resettled, but then she sort of found out that, you know, you don't really get resettled. And so she went underground for a brief period, and then she had a Christian friend who sort of looked like her, and the Christian friend um, helped her get fake papers with um, the, old, the, old, the friend's picture on it. And so then she became you know, she started living as a Christian in Germany, in Munich, and she met a man, Walter, who was in the um, army, the Nazi army, and she got married mostly for protection, because after the war they got divorced. But um, the man, Walter, knew that she was a Jew and apparently didn't care, and it was kind of a weird situation where he was very controlling and domineering, and she didn't have much power because, of course, he knew her secret and could turn her over to the Gestapo anytime he felt like it. So, you know, not really a good marriage situation. And so it was a really interesting um, book. And the, inter the other interesting thing about this is Edith was training as a lawyer when she was just barred from attending university. She literally only needed to take her bar exam before becoming a lawyer. So after the war, she was able to become a judge for a while, but then she had to give that up, and she moved to Israel, and now she lives in Israel, or she did at the time of the writing. I'm not sure if she's still alive or not. Anywho, I found this to be a really fascinating book. Again, it's still very relevant to our time, which is quite sad. She talks a lot about how um, like Christians and non-Jewish people in Germany and in Austria just accepted the Nazi party line because it made economic sense for them. You know, the Jewish people, in their mind, were taking up their resources, and so they were very willing to let the Nazi party sort of take over because of that, and so it's sadly very relevant to our times. I um, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it per se, but it was very enlightening, and I would recommend it if you're looking for a memoir from the Holocaust era, the World War II era, I would highly recommend this. The next book I picked up was Windows on the White House by Kurt Smith, and I've been reading this off and on throughout um, February, so I was glad to get this done. This is just a little um, book of vignettes about each presidential library. It was published in 1997, so it only goes through George H.W. Bush, and so it's a bit outdated in that regard. So it gives you a chapter on each president that has a library, and it gives you a biography, and then it gives you, like, an overview of how his library was created, and then it gives you an overview of like what's at the library at the time of writing. Um, like I said, it was written in 1997, so it's probably outdated in the fact that like the exhibits probably aren't the same, and the like visitor information, like the hours and the cost and stuff, are probably not the same. But so I wouldn't use this as like a reference guide, but it is pretty interesting for like the biography portions. Unfortunately, I only gave it two stars because I was hoping it would be more about like the creation of the Office of Presidential Libraries or the creation of like NARA, which is the Na National Archives and Records Administration, which is the government branch or government like office that I would like to work for one day. So I found this kind of disappointing, but it was still interesting. I would only recommend it if you're like really into presidential libraries like me. If you're not, then you're not missing out on much. But yeah, I read this, I read one chapter a day on this, and I 
finished it in like two or three weeks. You know, it was sort of a, it's a short book, but it was sort of a slow read for me. The last book I finished for the month, or for this wrap up, and probably for the month, was Shadows on the Rock by Willa Cather. Willa Cather is one of my favorite writers. Um, I really adore her writing. I find it very beautiful, and I really love this book. It's probably the, my favorite book of the year so far, and I would not be surprised if it was one of my favorite books overall for 2017. This follows Cecile, who is a young girl about 12 or 13, in um, Quebec, Canada, in um, the late 1600s, the late 17th century. She lived with her father, Claire, who was the local apothecary in Quebec, and they, live, they have a house. And Cecile's mother passed away from illness, and so she sort of takes care of her father, and is his housekeeper. And it's about how she is beginning to feel herself to be Canadian, even though she was born in France, and her father has plans to take them back to France today. She's sort of feeling like she wants to stay in Canada, and so this takes place over the year, one year. We start in, like, October, when the ships that come every year to bring supplies have gone away for the winter, and so they have to spend eight months in total, you know, they're cut off from the world. They don't get any letters or any you know, anything from the outside world. So it's all about their lives, and you see Cecile grow, and you see um, her friend Jack, who is has a very, um, a mother who's a prostitute, and who doesn't look after him very well, and so Cecile and her father are looking after him, and you get to see the importance of religion in Quebec. You see the bishop's perspective for a brief time, and you hear the story of the famous mystic, who's a nun in, um, Montreal, but she is known to several people in Quebec, and so her story is told. And you get to see um, Cecile and uh, Claire's friends, and it's just a really lovely book. You know, it's not very plot-driven, it's more about the characters, but in this case, it really works. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's the kind of book that makes you want to live in Quebec, even though in the 1600s, you know, there's no electricity or any sort of amenities, and um, so you wouldn't really want to live there, but Willa Cather just makes it so idyllic that you really want to see what it was like. And I just really love this cover, too. You got Cecile on the front, and you get to see um, Quebec, and then her father on the back, and there's the ocean and the town on the hill on the rock. And it's just a really beautiful book, and I highly recommend it, and I highly recommend all of Willa Cather's work. If you haven't read any of it, I would recommend it. It's just such a lovely, lovely writing and lovely words, and I love Willie Cotton there. So, yeah. So, that's all I've read so far in February, and I'll probably, I don't know if I'm going to finish another book in February. I'm working on The Zookeeper's Life by Diane Ackerman, which is another World War II memoir. This one's about a family who owns a zoo in Warsaw, Poland, and it's about how they hide um, people in their zoo, but it's also about a lot of other topics, too, sort of thrown in and mixed up, so I'm not actually enjoying it that well. I'm almost done, but I've been reading this for, like, over a week, and it's not even that long, and it's like, I'm not enjoying it. I'm gonna finish it, though, since I'm almost done. But, yeah, I can't say I recommend it. But I'll give you a longer review when I finish. I'll probably do that in my first March wrap-up. But, yeah, I'm not enjoying this. But it's midterm season right now, so I'm kind of, like, doing papers and reading and crazy, crazy school stuff. So I would be surprised if I finished another book besides that one in February. So I probably won't see you again until March. I'm planning to make a March TBR because I'm participating in... March Mystery Madness, so I'm going to do a little TBR for that. But yeah, I hope everybody's having a great February, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!